Good day, this is Jim Pytel from Columbia Gorge Community College Renewable Energy Technology Program. This is EET 122, Digital 2. Today, we are gonna have a discussion about synchronous counters. So let's recall that asynchronous counters, all lower order bits change prior to higher order bits, and that effect ripples through the counter, hence the term ripple counters. In contrast, a synchronous counter, all counter bits change simultaneously and this is how you do it so consider if you will these two jk flip-flops in close proximity all you're going to do is feed every single counter the same clock so that means their outputs will change simultaneously So every counter, as we've discussed previously, has a delay. And it's the same delay that accounts so everybody changes at the same time. The trick is how you set up the J and K for each stage. Sometimes you want it in toggle mode, sometimes not. For our two-bit counter that we've just drawn right here, let's go ahead and put our first stage, Q0, always in toggle mode. So the output for Q1, the MSB, we only want that to toggle when the output of the LSB, Q0, is high. So how we do that is just feed the output of the first stage to the JK inputs of the second stage. Let's go ahead and draw a timing diagram to illustrate what I'm talking about here. So if we've drawn our clock to look like this, where our positive edges, we're going to go ahead and highlight those. And I'm going to use this right here to indicate when those positive edges are occurring. Because again, we're dealing with a synchronous counter. Ideally, all inputs should change simultaneously on those positive edges. So that's going to help our diagram. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and highlight Q0 is being taken from here. That's the LSP. And Q1 is right here. Okay, so our LSB, it is constantly receiving a toggle signal but we are going to account for the delay this time. So it's at zero and it's going along and it receives a positive edge and it's in toggle mode, but there occurs a delay and it toggles right after that delay. Same thing here, the next positive edge, it toggles, but it toggles after the propagation delay. Same thing again here. Toggles after the propagation delay. So now Q1, at this positive edge right here, it is not receiving a command to toggle because notice how Q0 is still at zero. It is not at one. So it's going to go along and stay at zero. But at the next clock edge, Q0 is at 1, so it's going to toggle. But we have to account for that delay, the same delay, again, because we're using the same type. And again, at this next one, it is not receiving a toggle command because Q0 is at 0. And it's going to go like that. So what we've done here is there exists a delay for every single stage, but the delay is the same. So you get these simultaneously transition. You never get a point where it's rippling through. Notice how it goes cleanly. I'm going to go ahead and remove some of these arrows here. From 0, 0 to 0, 1 to 1, 0 
to 1, 1. And if we kept on going through this thing, it would recycle to 0, 0 and start counting back up again. So notice there is no, whereas previously in our asynchronous counters, there was a brief window of the time where it was 0, 0 right here. We don't have that problem with synchronous counters anymore. And just because I want to be absolutely complete here, let's go ahead and keep this going to show that that's toggling right there. And again, it's at that moment, it toggles back, so it does recycle back to our state of 0, 0. Again, since that first stage is in constant toggle, it's going to start counting back up through our sequence. In this particular case, double zero to double one. Notice how each positive edge here, there's the same delay that occurs, synchronous, all at the same time. So let's go ahead and expand this to a three-bit synchronous counter. Okay, so here's our three flip-flops here. And what we're going to do is we're going to feed the same clock to every single one of them. Because again, we want everybody to change at the same time. We know that our first stage is constantly toggling. We know that our second stage JK inputs are the output of the previous stage. And that's where Q0 is. And that's our MSB Q1. OK, so let's go ahead and we'll save the, uh, whoops, actually, let me get rid of this connection there. That's our output Q1. We're going to save the inputs for the third and final stage here, the MSB, for later. Because again, anticipation is part of showmanship. You should start thinking about this. OK, so we can go ahead and highlight where the positive edge transitions are on our clock up here. And because our first stage is constantly in toggle mode, it should, con it should toggle every single positive edge clock pulse. However, there exists a delay for that stage, so it's going to be toggling just slightly after the positive edge. I'll go ahead and draw how that looks now. So there we go. It's toggling every single positive edge, but because of the delay, it's slightly behind the positive edge. The next stage, Q1 here, is going to go ahead and toggle on the positive edge of the clock pulse with the inherent delay anytime Q0 is high. So it's going to miss this one because Q0 is not high. But it will toggle here because Q0 is high, but there's an innate delay. And it's going to go along like this. Innate delay misses it, toggles, but with a delay. toggles, but the delay. OK, so now, knowing what we know about our digital sequences, Q0, Q1, Q2, Q2 should change from 0 to 1 only if Q0 and Q1 are 1. And notice the dramatic pause I, say, I use there, and. So it stands to conjecture that the next stage, the third stage, Q2, should toggle only when Q0 and Q1 are 1. OK? So graphically, we would expect it to still stay at 0 all the way through here. OK? But now, in our binary counting sequence, we've gone from 0, 0, well, triple 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 
0, 1, 1. And now we want to progress to the next stage after 0, 0, excuse me, 0, 1, 1. So we've already reached 3. We want to transition to 4. It's going to toggle right there. OK, so now we're in 4. So when did it toggle? When Q0 and Q1 were 1. So we can implement that. Let's go ahead and make this a little cleaner. When Q0 and Q1 are 1. And what's our output? That's our output right there, Q2. So the only time it's going to toggle is right there. Simultaneously, those make the same edge transition. And you're back to our triple zero. Notice how we've counted up. So we went from 4 to 5 to 6 to 7, which is the end state of a 3-bit counter. and we're Recycling back to zero. And to make absolutely certain we've beaten this horse to death, we can go ahead and expand this out to a 4-bit synchronous counter. So what do we do with the clocks? Tie them all together. So that way everybody's changing on the same positive edge plus the delay. But I want to get rid of this line here because it's just going to make it more complicated. So just remember, all the clocks are tied together. First stage, what's the first stage? Constantly in toggle mode. The next stage is receiving, if this is Q0, the LSB. We know this guy eventually is going to be Q3, the MSB, by extension. So we want this next, so that's our first stage, second. So now our third stage, we want it to toggle only when the first two, the previous two stages are high. So same thing occurs with a four bit counter. We want it to toggle the last stage to toggle only when all previous stages are high. Okay, just think about the progression um, with a, let's talk about the progression from binary 7 to binary 8. So notice all three previous stages have to be 1 for this guy to change. So how you do that, you could do a triple input AND, or understanding that ANDing something previously is like a triple input AND. All you do is AND these guys together. Let me make that clear. There we go. And so where do we read our outputs? There's Q0. There's Q1, there's Q2, there's Q3. This is the anding of Q0 and Q1. And what we're doing is we're anding it together. All three of these guys need to be high for this stage to toggle. OK, so a timing diagram should be relatively easy to draw albeit very exhausting. So Q0 is going to toggle every clock pulse with our delay. Let's go ahead and actually put our delay in there, though. And since this one's really easy, I'm going to go ahead and do this and come right back. There we go. So Q0 is toggling every clock pulse plus a delay. Now Q1 should toggle any time Q0 hits a positive edge but with a delay. So right there, right there, 
there. And I'm going to go ahead and fill that in. And that's what Q1 looks like. So now Q2, as discussed previously in our three bit counters, it's going to toggle only when Q0 and Q1 are one. So the first time it toggles is right there. But then there's a bit of a delay right there. Next time it toggles is right here with a bit of a delay. And next time right there, another delay. I'll go ahead and fill this in. So finally, our Q3. We want it, since it's the MSB, to only toggle when all three previous stages are one. So it is going to be one, excuse me, it's going to be zero the whole time until right there. All three are one. Next positive edge occurs with a delay. It stays one until the next time all three are one right there. With a delay, it goes back. And what you get is this progression And I'll save you the unnecessary gory details. So we've changed from 7 to 8. I'm doing this for a reason. All the way up to 15. And what happens at 15 for a mod 16 counter? Recycles back to quadruple zero. So our mod 16 counter, counting from 0 to 15, is not terribly useful on a decimal world. So we normally want to count 0 to 9, so we need to stop it once it progresses into the 10th state, which is this guy right here. So we could be very simple and use our NAND gate to clear it, when it once it tries to enter 1010. Zero, one zero. And that would be very, very, very easy to implement by just dangling a NAND gate over here and putting, well, what are we going to put in? We're going to put in Q3 and Q1. I'll spare you all the connections. And we're going to tie that to the low clear dangling off every single one of these And what, would, what that would do is it would instantly force you into a clear state. Of zero, 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 zero. And you'd start it back up again on the next positive edge. And you would start right here again, going back up to one, to two, so on and so forth. And then that NAND gate is going to clear it. So, this right here is a very simple and reliable technique of forcing something to recycle at a number lower than the entire modulus. But as we discussed previously, it makes it, unfortunately, go into briefly into a state. Let's go ahead. I'm going to clean up this diagram real quick. So this is ideally what we'd like to see for a decade counter where it's going from 1 triple zero, i.e. 8, to 9, 1, 0, 1. I think I may have had my previous diagram incorrectly, because remember, a mod 10 counter is going to stop at 9 and recycle to 0. It doesn't go to 10. I may have uh, mistakenly had that um, recycling, hitting 10, recycling to 0. But it, again, it doesn't do that. It recycles from 9 to 0. It does not enter the 10 state. And again, ideally, we should have this clean transition back to zero. But remember this NAND gate from our previous discussion there? What happens is it forces, excuse me, it does enter the 10th state, albeit very briefly. And you get this glitch right there. So 
we can make something incredibly complicated. I'll truly admit this. But we can actually delete that glitch state entirely. All you have to do is detect the presence of a 9. Detecting the presence of a 9 and forcing it back to 0 prior to it entering the 10th state. Even though momentarily, you're still going to get a glitch. We want to avoid that. So this is how you do this. OK, so here's our 4-bit asynchronous counter, excuse me, 4-bit synchronous counter, where our clocks are all tied to the same clocking input. I've just left that off right now because it's going to make it super messy. And right here, our first stage is still at plus 5, so that one is perpetually in toggle mode. So now what we need to do is detect the presence of a 9 and just get it to recycle. And all this is, yeah, I'll fully admit that using the clears with a NAND is a substantially easier way to do it, but we want to make it super pretty. We want to avoid that little glitch that occurs right there when we do the NAND trick. So how do we do this? All right, so the first stage is still going to be toggle moding all the time because the analysis of this thing here shows a constant 0 to 1 to 0 to 1, 0 to 1, on and on and on. That's not changing. But now the second stage, Q1, it's not necessarily ch toggling with any repeatable pattern or a previously repeatable pattern. Notice it was 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. OK, so there's something going on here that we've got to account for. So notice that Q1, that stage is only in toggle mode only when Q0 is a 1, i.e. right here, and Q3 is a 0. I'm going to get rid of some numbers here. So the next occurrence of it toggling, right there and right there, notice again Q3 is 0, Q0 is 1. The next time it toggles, right there, and right there, right there, right there, and up to our final one. Well, it's it's not going to toggle right here because Q3 is now 1. So I admit it takes a little bit of forethought to see those patterns. OK, so now what we could do is just well, I'm going to put everything all into a, uh, well, the, the logical expression here. Let's, I'm trying to think how to easily present this here. So when this toggles, when this stage here toggles, we want it to toggle when Q0 is 1 and Q3 is 0. So why not? just negate Q3. We don't really need an inverter. What we can do is use this guy right here. That's already not Q3. And this is how this looks when it's all hooked together. So we've disconnected the, dire the direct feed of the output Q0 to the toggle inputs of stage Q1. And what we've done is put an AND gate there where we're anding Q0 with not Q3. And those are our toggle inputs now. Our second stage hasn't changed, excuse me, Q2, our third stage, hasn't really changed a lot because it's still toggling four zeros, four ones, four zeros, four ones. So we could still, oh, excuse me, before I say that, I'm mistaken on that one. 
what I mean to say. It's still toggling when Q0 and Q1 are simultaneously 1. That's what I meant to say. Because I'm going to go ahead and remove our x's from our previous analysis. Because the only time it toggles is when the two previous stages are both 1's. So notice it toggles right there and right there. So what I mean to say was basically we can and the previous stages for the toggle inputs for the third stage. And that's going to look like this. That's just a simple connection between those guys. I'm going to draw that in black, though. OK, final one here. Oops. OK, so the final stage here only toggles twice. So Q3, like I said, only follow, toggles twice. When does it do so? Right here and right here. So when all three are simultaneously high, or when it itself is high and Q0 is high. So what we have to do is just do a little bit of a feedback arrangement here within summing, you know, think about this. Here's an and, and here's an or. Here's another and, and you're oring in between them. And what does that sound like? Come on, guys, digital one. It's the sum of products. It's ors, excuse me, one or with two ands feeding it. And what that looks like, what its toggle mode is going to be, it's again the all three previous stages, because you're anding and anding and anding. That's accounting for this one. And then we're oring, excuse me, anding another time when itself is high. or, excuse me, and Q0, the first stage. And now, finally, we get to put our OR in there. And that is its toggle mode. OK? So I'm going to make this super pretty or super complicated, as the case may be. And again, I've neglected the clock right here to make it even more complicated. Everybody gets the same clock. And all this arrangement does, it just prevents you from going into a glitch state right there, just by tricking when each individual flip-flop goes into its toggle mode. OK, let's wrap up this discussion of synchronous counters with a discussion of the 74163. And this is a synchronous 4-bit counter with some specially cool features on it. OK, your Q0s through Q3s, that's your output. Nothing special there. It's going to go from 0 to 15. But there's a special output right here called our terminal count, and it's RCO. What happens with the terminal count there, that one goes high once it's counted up to 15. And what the use of the terminal count is when you start cascading counters. So this counter has reached 15. It lets the next order counter know, OK, we're at 15. Let's let me start counting now. So we'll see how, a cas how we cascade counters and get numbers higher than 16 with the 74163 and related devices. Um, these two guys right here, ENT and ENP, all those are, are just enables. So they both got to be high for it to be enabled. Nothing special about those guys. The clock, positive edge clock, are clear. Active low clear, if it's given a 0, clears it back to zero, starts again. So the cool features about the 74163 is this guy 
and these four guys. These are data inputs, and you can preload the 74163 with, let's say you want to count from four. You want to start at four. What you do is put in four, and remember we're LSB to MSB on this one. Put 0, 1, 0, 0, reading it this way, onto your data inputs. And then, since the, lo the load is an active low, give it a little low, and it starts at 4. Enable it, and it starts counting up from 4. So all those things are is just a preload, and you can put whatever you want to on this one. You want to start it out at 15. You want to start it out at 7. Whatever you want to, all you have to do is give an active low load. If you haven't given an active low load command, all that data is going to do is just hang out there and do nothing. So it's going to start from 0, count to 15, back to 0, up to 15, until you give it an active low load, and boom. Whatever it was, it goes to, in our particular case, 4, and starts counting up from there. So just some pretty neat additional features to this particular synchronous counter. Long story short, synchronous counters, every flip-flop gets the same clock. All bits change simultaneously. And there are cunning ways, i.e. this super complicated mess right here, to trick individual flip-flops to toggle at certain times for a decade counter, and very simple methods using our NAND gate right here. The complicated method avoids the glitch state. Again, synchronous counters all at the same time.